All right. So, kia ora. Hello, everyone. So, my name is Yuki, and I'm one of the regional markets manager here at the University of Otago, based in Dunedin. And I look after the Japan, Taiwan, Philippine, and the African countries. And I will be your facilitator today. Um, first of all, I'd like to extend a very warm welcome to everyone zooming in from all over the country, from different time zones. Um, thank you very much for joining our very first webinar series, Start Your Otago Journey From Home. So this year, in a way, has brought us all together through these virtual platforms and we're all delighted to be here with you today. Shant, sorry. Oh. Just wanted to double check, can everyone see the shared screen? Perfect. Okay. All right. So um, I'd like to make an exciting announcement. I'm sure everyone is aware, but um, as you may have heard, New Zealand has achieved zero active COVID-19 cases yesterday. And midnight, um, we entered the alert level one. So life here in New Zealand is looking very close to how it used to be, and ex except with some border restrictions still in place. But overall, we're feeling quite happy and hoping COVID-19 will settle down worldwide very soon. Okay, so in this webinar today, we'll be covering the programs offered by the University of Otago Language Center and Foundation Year with special focus on our online offerings. So at the very end, we will have a Q&A section, but um, during the webinar, you're more than welcome to ask questions in the Q&A box in the um, Zoom screen in front of you. Just a reminder, it would be great if you could send it through to Q&A. This way we can capture your question and not use a chat function. So I'd like to introduce you to our speakers today. First of all, we have Gary Kronikin. He is the academic manager from our foundation here. Would you like to say hi, Gary? Just a quick hi. Hi, hi everyone. Thank you very much for coming along today. Uh, good morning from where you are. It's a beautiful sunny afternoon here. Great. And followed by Victoria McNary. So she is a regional market manager looking after Southeast Asia and Middle East. Kia ora. Hello. Great to see you all. Thank you. And I'm very excited to welcome Violina Gunawan, who is our former foundation year student, and she's now student studying her Bachelor of Dental Surgery. So she'll share her student story and what it's like to study, live in Dunedin and Otago. Now, along with our speakers today, we have a couple of our um, staff members joining us virtually as well. So I'd like to introduce you to them. Um, if you'd like to unmute yourself and say a quick hi, that would be great. So first, Paul Baker, he is the academic manager from the Language Centre. Well, hello everybody, it's great to see so many together with us online. Thank you, and Jasmine Chu, she is the inbound short tour manager also from the Language Centre. Hi everyone, I'm very appreciate you inviting me here. Great, and lastly, we have Joyce Zhang. So she's joining from China. Um, she is a market manager for Greater China in Korea. Hello, everyone. I'm Joyce. I'm the up to mainland of China, Hong Kong, and Korea. So feel free to leave your questions, and we try our best to answer your question. Thank you. Perfect. Thanks, Joy. So as um, Joy said, we've got all the experts here with you today. So please ask away all your questions that you've got. All right, now I would like to pass it on to Gary. Well, hello again, everyone. Um, thank you very much, Yukie. Um, yes, I do want to acknowledge my colleagues here, Victoria, um, Paul, Paul Baker, Jasmine, and especially to Violina, who has just finished uh, one of her dental exams. Um, we're very proud, proud of her. So uh, thank you all for coming along. I can already see that um, as well as uh, some people I haven't met before. They're some of my friends. One of the wonderful 
aspects of this business we're involved in is that uh, we make lots of good friends from around the world. So welcome here today and to any students and all students. Uh, we hope to give you the information that you need to find your pathway here to Dunedin and the University of Otago. Um, yes, I'm, I'm glad that Yuki has pointed out how safe we are. It's uh, uh, something we're very proud of in New Zealand. We've always been able to say it's a safe country and given the pandemic that is happening around the world, we can say that again unreservedly, that uh, we have uh, no virus here. Uh, next slide, please. So I just want to tell you a few things about Dunedin. I know some of you have been here. Um, I would describe it as a small, vibrant, friendly city of education. Uh, yes, a, a low population, but you will find everything in Dunedin that you will find in a big city, perhaps uh, except traffic jams and some pollution. Uh, a, a nice city to be in. And we're very proud that the University of Otago is uh, the number one business in, in Dunedin. Thanks, Yuki. Um, yes, uh, I want to acknowledge that we have uh, two uh, academic programs here. So as well as the foundation year, we have a language center. So two distinct academic programs, but we are, are like our brothers or sisters. We work close together and we allow that pathway for students to get through to undergraduate study, which I guess is the, the goal for most students. Um, so you can see there uh, that uh, as well as the foundation program, we have uh, a lot of English language options for people. So everything from elementary right through to advanced. Um, uh, Paul will be able to answer any um, special questions about English language uh, later on in the, in the presentation. I should comment that all of our staff in both Language Centre and Foundation Year are experts in their field. So they're all well qualified, they're all experienced, and they're all incredibly enthusiastic, wonderful teachers. We're lucky to have a testing centre here for English language. We have our own homestay service. So it's a bit like a one-stop shop. Once students show an interest and enrol for us, we take care of the rest. Another thing we're really proud of is the fact that, as well as international students here, we have uh, domestic students as well. So we're kind of unique in that way, and it's a, a roughly 50-50% split between domestics and internationals. So uh, a very nice atmosphere, very welcoming and, and lovely atmosphere here. Next slide, please, Yuki. So uh, the good news about pathways is that just about every pathway you can think of is catered for here. So we acknowledge that sometimes students might need English language preparation. Sometimes they might need more academic preparation. And we are able to provide options for either of those uh, or in fact, both of those possibilities. So you can see there a, a diagram of the, the ultimate goal, I suppose, is to get down to first year undergraduate study or indeed postgraduate study. And so if you have a look at the, the top right there, for instance, uh, you could join the language center for general English. Um, if it's English language, that is a requirement. You could uh, join the bridging program if it is academic preparation that is needed. I'm going to talk more about the accelerated foundation program later in the presentation. It's new, I think, for everyone, apart from uh, some of the, the staff here. On the left-hand side there, you can see the English for Otago, uh, which is a, a, a program for both undergraduate and postgraduate. And again, Paul can, can expand on that later. Thanks, Yuki. So what is foundation year? What is foundation? Well, it's a university entrance program. And students who complete it successfully gain the foundation studies certificate, and that guarantees students entry to the University of Otago and indeed all universities in New Zealand. It's called foundation year, but 
actually it doesn't take a year it's a, it's around eight months of study so it's a 32 week program actually it's two 13 week semesters uh, with some holidays and exams thrown in so uh, the total time takes 32 weeks uh, who studies it as i've mentioned it's both internationals and domestic students so we have internationals from around the world uh, we have internationals that have been in New Zealand high schools. Uh, we have many here that are here on scholarships from various countries. Uh, and of course, domestic students too. So um, uh, most of the students that we get uh, domestic are students that have studied our year 13 and are seeking more uh, advanced uh, study before they do their undergraduate study. Uh, of course, we are the University of Otago Foundation year, so our academic streams reflect exactly the four academic uh, divisions at the University of Otago. So you can see there with Arts and Humanities, the Business Commerce, Health Sciences and Other Sciences comprise the, the four academic streams. Thanks, Yuki. Next slide, please. Um, I guess a, a question uh, for students, parents, agents is how successful are we in preparing students for the university? Uh, we've got some pretty good answers to that, and, and here is one answer. Um, Violina will be uh, evidence <laughs> uh, later in the presentation of, of one uh, particularly successful student. Um, so we've, we've had a look at the achievement of some of our students that have gone on to health science in particular. Uh, and the same uh, is true of all the other streams actually. But if you focus on what's there in red in front of you at the moment, every year I suppose around 1800 students study health science first year, seven academic papers, and we've looked at those seven papers over three years, hence the uh, the three numbers down the bottom and we've looked at the average percentage achievement for the total cohort for all those students and that's reflected in the red bars when we did that we looked at the into the um, foundation year students who were part of that total cohort so we've teased out their performance and we've looked at the foundation students the students who had studied foundation the previous year and how they performed and you can see by the blue bars there that in just about every case, they performed better in the first semester of health science first year than the total cohort. So you, I guess you couldn't say it's absolute proof, but it's very strong evidence that students do achieve better. And that, that average represented about 3.1%. Some of the subjects like physics and chemistry, it was up to 5% better. Thanks, Yuki. Um, of course, not all of the benefits come from just academic and English language. You know that uh, with education, it's all about how, how good you feel about yourself and uh, how comfortable you are and what facilities and support you've got around you. So we recognize that a lot when they come into Foundation Year and the Language Center here. We, we've, uh, we're well practiced at delivering the curriculum at an appropriate pace. We don't go too fast, we don't go too slow. And we try to meet the needs of all the individuals. We only uh, keep class sizes down to 18 students. So we, we know that students can get better attention from the teachers with low class numbers. We do though in foundation year also teach in university style. So typically, a student will have uh, some lectures where we uh, teach all of the academic knowledge. And then we have tutorials, which are a bit like uh, high school classrooms. And we have consultations, which is one-to-one -one FaceTime with, with teachers. Uh, cultural orientation is very important. We, we deeply respect all cultures that come here. We celebrate them and we, uh, we welcome them with open arms. Uh, it's a very supportive environment, and we can say that because uh, we have got a wonderful student support team from our academic dean and the student support staff. They're involved in the orientation, they're involved in uh, timetabling, they're involved with the students right from the start, and they're accessible every day. As students walk into the building, 
the building you can see behind me, uh, the, the student support staff are there and they provide ongoing support throughout their time here and indeed for students that go on to the university. Um, something that shouldn't be neglected is the fact that after eight months, some students or within that eight months at foundation year decide, oh, maybe I don't want to be a doctor, maybe I want to be a dentist. And that's okay, we can accommodate that too. So it's all about us providing the options that the University of Otago offer. Of course, just getting familiar with the university facilities and the departments. When we have our lectures, they are in the, the university lecture halls. When we have our laboratories and sciences and health sciences, they are in the same labs they'll be using for the next year at undergraduate study. And of course, it builds confidence. It builds academic confidence. It builds personal confidence. So by the time the students leave here, they feel fully prepared and confident that they can achieve at the university. Uh, well, we have uh, some, some new things to say, some things to, that you may not have heard before. So uh, next slide, Yuki. Now, firstly, of course, uh, I guess the world has gone online and, and we've certainly responded to that challenge. So for all of our um, general English pro programs, uh, they're, they're online, the 15 weeks, 15 hours per week of tuition, everything is online. Uh, we have some real experts in the language center who have been delivering that around the world anyway, long before we knew about a pandemic. And again, those five levels from elementary to advanced. And again, a maximum of 18 students in the class. So we have live virtual classrooms. Um, and really, what, that, what does that mean? That means it's a pathway to foundation and a pathway to the university, basically from your home city. Um, and of course, you, you make friends online too. Nothing like being right here in Dunedin at the University of Otago, but this is a pretty good option as well. Uh, the other aspect to it, of course, is that it saves a lot of money because uh, no need to travel here in the first instance and uh, no need to be accommodated here. And there's some costs, costings there on the right-hand side of, side of that slide. Thanks, Yuki. Um, so yes, the English for Otago program, something we're very proud of. It's uh, certainly a, a, a pathway um, language program, and again, a minimum of 15 hours tuition per week, delivered live online in a virtual classroom. Uh, and again, the, the ability to make friends uh, from from different corners of the world. Foundation year, so yes, we've gone completely online and we've got our next intake in June and then after that in October. So um, the platforms we're using for that are Zoom, Microsoft 365 Teams and indeed our own Blackboard. So once students uh, enroll here and are admitted, we will be sending out really clear instructions as to how students can access that. So we've, we've made up a, a full package, very easy to, to understand. Uh, the other thing we do, we don't use textbooks here. We prepare our own digital curriculum documents and they will be sent to students and they can either use them on their computer or actually print them off and, uh, and have them available for, for written uh, preparation as well. Um, uh, exactly the same as for what we're doing with uh, students here in person, the curriculum is uh, split delivery is split into lectures and tutorials and consultations. So lectures uh, where we deliver the, the content, tutorials where we discuss the content and the learning goes on, and then the consultations face to face. Uh, it's, it's very easy to apply online. If you're applying from overseas right now, there is no option but to <laughs> but to have online delivery. And so uh, we'll, we'll make that option available to you and send off some information pretty smartly. And for those of you that are agents, we can give you that information in advance if you'd like. It's still our strong preference that you come here when the board is open to study in Dunedin. Uh, it's a wonderful university, wonderful campus, wonderful city, wonderful people around. So we can't wait to get back to that, but we're happy with uh, online delivery in the meantime. Next slide, please. So there are just uh, a few uh, facts about the, the fees. And next, Yuki. Um, I do want to talk a little bit just for a moment about scholarships. Uh, we have this year increased the value of our scholarships to $4,000, uh, which will be applied as a, as a, a rebate um, on the tuition fee. 
it's it's very simple process that uh, we prefer that it, it's it's worked with we we have the scholarships applied for through the agents so um, for those of you that are agents we can provide more information about that and um, then there's a very simple uh, process for applying for those um, there's just an idea of how much you're going to save with online study you can see there's a significant saving in the meantime now we anticipate once the borders do open and once we can open our, our programs up for study here, we will still have an online study stream and more information about that later. Thanks, Yuki. So there is something about the uh, entry requirements. You can have a quick scan of that and I know Victoria is going to talk more about that later. Thanks, Yuki. Um, yeah. <laughs> Uh, so the, the 2020 intakes, I've mentioned that we've got another intake in June, then one in October, and of course they're the dates for next year. And now I just want to tell you something about the Accelerated Foundation Program. Thanks, Yuki. So it's a, a brand new program. Actually, it's still being uh, confirmed through the university approval process, but it's, it's close. Um, so rather than study two semesters of uh, uh, foundation, we're uh, looking at a band of students who we know we've had here before who really just haven't quite got enough academic uh, background to get into undergraduate study. This is for them. Uh, it's a 14 week, one semester program. Uh, it's just for commerce and arts. It's just for internationals in the meantime. And uh, we, we would require a, a slightly higher IELTS and a pretty good academic performance from high school. So your year 12 over there with a, a B average, which I know will, will differ depending on country to country. Um, and again, small class sizes and all of the same uh, options that we have for the extended, the other foundation program, we have for the accelerated foundation. So watch this space for that one. Our student support, I've mentioned that before, full engagement by our student support team right from day one here. And uh, it's one of the real strengths of, of uh, Foundation Year Language Centre, that not only academic, but student support, um, wraparound student support. Thanks, Yuki. Uh, and there are just some of the, the aspects of that that apply also to, to the University uh, of Otago. Uh, lastly, I just want to mention that you can see the building behind me. It's the uh, Plaza building. So we cohabit the Plaza building with the Unipol Recreation Centre. It's free for students that come to Language Centre Foundation. Uh, so any number of sporting, fitness, equipment hire, facilities available. So uh, a great way to, to introduce a bit of balance in your life. Thank you everyone for, for listening. Um, and uh, I'm going to hand over to Victoria. Thank you so much for that, Gary. And um, before we move on to the next part um, led by Victoria, I just wanted to make an announcement for those that joined a little later. Welcome, welcome on board. And um, we have a chat function available. So please feel free to ask your questions in the, um, sorry, not the chat, the Q&A function at the bottom of your Zoom screen. This way we can capture your questions and answer any questions that we can't answer within this webinar and follow up percent. Um, send a follow-up email and also this webinar is recorded and it will be available for you after um, this session. All right now I would like to welcome Victoria. Thank you UTA. So I'm going to be talking first of all about the university entrance into the University of Otago from Foundation Studies Certificate and then we're just going to talk about each pathway from each stream. If you could just go to the pathways um, slide, please, UKA. Thank you. So in order to be awarded the Foundation Studies Certificate and gain university entrance to the University of Otago, New Zealand's oldest university and ranked in the top 1% of universities in the world, students must achieve a minimum of 96 points. So this is achieved by gaining a minimum grade of a C in both the Academic English 1 and English 2 paper and gaining a minimum grade of a C minus in at least six other papers. So what this means is to pass the Foundation Study Certificate, a student must achieve a minimum of 96 points over 10 papers. And that includes a minimum grade of a C in both the academic English papers. 
So as Gary pointed out, the Foundation Study Certificate is recognised by all New Zealand institutions and some overseas universities. And of course, the University of Otago, we will reward high achieving foundation students with entrance scholarships. So first of all, I'm just going to talk a little bit about the art stream. So on completion or graduation from foundation year art stream, the students can go directly into the following bachelors that you see in front of you. And the Division of Humanities offers a wide range of internationally recognized programs in the creative and performing arts, humanities and the social sciences. In addition to the BA or Bachelor of Arts degree, um, it has, that has a very wide range of majors, they also offer undergraduate diplomas and degrees in music, performing arts, as well as law and Bachelor of Teaching. We find that the Otago Humanities graduates are very highly employable, with 95% of Humanities graduates are employed in careers related to their training. Next slide, please. So science has been an essential cornerstone of the University of Otago since its establishment in 1869. At Otago, of course, studying science is mostly confined to studying biology, chemistry, physics, maths, either stats or calculus. And so at the university, we understand that basically students come in and they just can be bewildered with the range of subjects that um, of the majors you can take under the division of sciences. And sometimes it's hard to know which ones might be closely related to the sciences that you, that you enjoyed at Foundation. So this is where we have university student subject advisors and Foundation staff who can help the Foundation students navigate which degree is the best fit for them in the graduate opportunities. The Division of Science offers a number of programs available nowhere else in New Zealand. Surveying, botany and science communication are only available at Otago and the only place where you can explore the fascinating field of neuroscience at undergraduate level. Otago science majors are flexible and a number are very interdisciplinary, drawing on strengths across the departments. Genetics, plant biotechnology, marine science, ecology, neuroscience are all examples of these. Otago is uniquely placed to offer a range of sites of field-based studies in zoology, marine science, geology, botany, ecology and more. There are not many universities in the world that have from just on their doorstep, from the mountain ranges down to the sea, that the students, especially in science, can experience on field trips and doing research. Next screen please. The Otago Business School is ranked number one for research in New Zealand by PBRF. That's our government ranking in New Zealand. And it's home to six dedicated teaching and research departments. It is the only university in New Zealand to have a department of tourism, the oldest entrepreneurial ship course, and the only sustainable business PG management program currently in the country. So students under a Bachelor of Commerce will do the majors of Accounting and Finance, Economics, Entrepreneurship, Human Resource Management, Information Science, International Business, Management, Marketing, Tourism, Philosophy, Politics and Economics. We're the only university in New Zealand to offer this triple major. Not only is it under a Bachelor of Commerce, but also a Bachelor of Arts. Graduates from the Otago Business School gain not only a solid understanding of their chosen business discipline, but also an appreciation of the wider business sector. Where the students end up working for multinational firms, government agencies, NGOs, a small non-for-profit organization, or run their own business, ultimately conducting business is all about people. And that's why we've started to introduce more and more interdivisional um, double bachelor degrees. So like the BA become incredibly popular to have say uh, marketing as your major in commerce and psychology 
as a major and a BA. The Otago Business School has a proud reputation for producing graduates that are highly regarded by all sectors of the industry. And business, Otago business students graduates can be found all over the world, reaching the very top of their fields and they stand out for their excellent technical abilities, but also because of their social and networking skills. And this is a product of what we call the Otago experience, gained while living in Dunedin. And you can be assured that a business qualification from Otago will be world class. Otago holds dual international accreditations through AACBS, Equus, and we're a founding member of the PIM network of the world's leading business schools. An Otago business qualification is a passport to travel and work anywhere in the world. Next slide, please. Health Sciences. So on completion of a foundation year health science stream, students will go directly into the health science first year if they want to go into the health science professional program. So health science first year counts as the first year of study for the health science professional programs of dentistry, dentistry medical laboratory science, medicine, pharmacy, physiotherapy. <coughs> It doesn't matter whether you're a domestic or an international student, you must do health science first year. And Violaina is going to talk about this a little bit later. But doing a health science stream doesn't just open the doors to health science first year. It can also lead into BSc and biomedical science degrees. And these range in anatomy, biochemistry, genetics, neuroscience, physiology, it also can take you into the Bachelor of Health Science and the major here that's very popular with international students is Public Health. Please note that our Bachelor of Health Science does not lead into a professional program. Yes, University of Auckland's does, Otago's doesn't. They must go into the health science here. What we found and what Gary has um, shown you uh, just earlier is the foundation year students that um, graduate and go into health science first year are getting the higher GPAs and are getting the places into these professional programs. We cannot guarantee you a place um, from graduation from foundation. You must go into health science first year but we find the students having done that eight, mo eight months, been on campus in the lecture theatres, they're being taught by ex-academics, the curriculum, they're being introduced to health science first year, and those academics, those teachers in foundation year will quickly tell the students if they're wanting to get into dentistry and medicine, uh, whether they are capable, you know, or they're going to be working, need to work harder within foundation year. Next uh, slide, please. Alumni. So I don't have the time to list the thousands of foundation alumni um, and where their Otago journey has taken them. What I suggest you do is go onto the Language Centre and Foundation website and read some of the testimonials for yourself. We have CEOs, presidents, vice presidents, even international models, graduates, foundation graduates who are gaining today accolades and recognition from their industry and career within New Zealand and overseas. I think the highlight for all staff, including myself, is to go to the foundation year graduation ceremony at the end of each stream. Over the years, we've all watched foundation students arrive to class as young teenagers, and there's nothing more rewarding to follow the University of Otago journey as they sort of blossom into young independent adults and to be there to celebrate them, celebrate with them either in New Zealand or overseas as they land their first job. And if you've been as lucky as me to be working in the international office for such a long time, to be able to meet students at alumni events, to be introduced to their partners, usually other Otago alumni, and even their children, it's just wonderful. And to, to hear about where their Otago degree has taken them around the world, it always just makes me so proud. 
Next slide, please. So this is some of the testimonials, as I said, please go on um, the Foundation Language website and to read about some of our past students. Next slide, please. One alumni, Foundation alumni, who I am so proud of, and I'd like to introduce you to, is Violina Guaruana. Um, she's, her home is Indonesia, and right now, Aquinas College. She's a former Foundation Year student, who was also the recipient of the 2019 Vice Chancellor's Scholarship and is currently studying a Bachelor of Dentistry. Please, I'd like to introduce you to Violin. Hi everyone. Um, hope you're doing well and healthy. And I'm Violina Gunawan. I'm currently studying a second year um, in Bachelor of Dental Surgery. So I took foundation year health sciences classes two years ago. Um, but before I start on my journey, I'd like to thank Gary and Victoria for reaching out to me and making this opportunity available for me. So I've always wanted to do dentistry and I've always wanted to study abroad. My mother first came across Otago from her niece that was studying chiropractic in Auckland. She did recommend Otago for its well-known reputation in sciences and research. And when my school promoted this at um, International Education Fair in Indonesia, um, my family and I, we went to it and that's when I first met Victoria. And that was um, four years ago or four to five years ago, I believe. So it was quite a long ago. And we talked about our options pathways of getting into dentistry in New Zealand and in 2016 we decided to visit New Zealand during winter it was a school holiday and Victoria took us for a campus tour I instantly fell in love with the campus it's amazing I get to see what classes are like in the um, foundation building I get to see the plaza cafe and the best thing is probably the free access to the gym so um i was like mom dad yes i want to go to new zealand i was so excited and impatient impatient that i even um did the bridging course before my foundation year so i did and let me tell you why the extra eight months was the best decision the points i'm going to make are about the academic advantages adaptation and personal growth so the entry to the dentistry program is quite competitive both through health sciences first year or postgrad program so i wanted to be ready to compete during my first year in foundation year the classes that i took were academic english chemistry physics biology health and disease and these are all the subjects that provide basics for the first years in health sciences program I'm not lying when I say I learned so much more within eight months in foundation year compared to my years in high school. As Gary mentioned before, we have um, small classes and tutorials that we were such a tight knit community and it makes the learning environment friendlier. My favorite thing about foundation year academic system would be the optional session called the consultation timetable, where you get to talk about specific questions that you are not familiar with. And this is one on one with the lecturer. And the lecturers are very amazing. They are very friendly and encouraging. They love it when you ask questions. So it doesn't make you feel discouraged from learning just because of one thing that you couldn't understand. So this builds a very sound basic academic skills for me, which comes really handy. Another thing is that coming to a new country alone, it was exciting. It feels liberating that you're finally free and you get to make your own decisions. Um, for example, I can decide that I'm going to buy myself some ice cream after the exam or I can go for a sushi date with my group of friends on Friday evening. Well, because, you know, it's Friday. But on the other hand, it was also scary in terms of am I doing things right? How do I make friends in such a different environment with different language, different food, different culture? Because often having those similarities are the easiest ways to make friends especially when you go to a university that 
you have such a large cohort of students, 2,000 students, um, taking the same paper. Imagine coming here without previous experience. It would be very overwhelming to make friends. But since I've went to foundation yet, yeah, I've already made friends before. And this is not to say that I don't have to make friends anymore in university, because one of the benefit of studying abroad is to build your network. And what I'm trying to say is in foundation year, I've exposed to many differences in cultures, backgrounds, like I have friends that are fresh about high school, but also um, those that had a successful career before, but wanted to go back to university to pursue a different path. So this exposure had made me more confident in approaching other people to make even more new friends. And another thing is that since you've um, academically supported during foundation year, you have more time to look after yourself and find ways how to look after yourself. For example, um, how to handle homesickness. And you've learned this before everybody else does. And this gives you an obvious advantage, especially in a competitive course. Foundation year also provided many many activities and some of that I participated was um, the Koto lesson, a Japanese music instrument. It was a um, five-week lesson, I think, and um, also International Food Festival where me and my fellow Indonesian buddies, we cooked Indo uh, Indonesian food and everybody was enjoying it. And finally is the personal growth. I cannot stress enough on how much I learned in such a short period of time, not just about the science, but also about myself and how to improve myself. Foundation year is academically focused and so it supports you, but you're in such a supported environment that you have time to think about yourself. So you get to grow as a person, especially in terms of taking opportunities. During my foundation year, I found out that we have Indonesian Student Association here in Dunedin. And there are also other student associations from other countries as well. So I made friends and connect with um, my fellow Indonesians. And since I've already get the basics um, academic wise, it allows me to do more commitments aside just from studying during my first year. So, I was also the um, public relations officer of the Indonesian Student Association last year. So I get to do social things too, such as organizing my team for an international food festival and so on and so forth. And also thanks for doing foundation year. I had the chance to apply for an entrance scholarship and that's how I was awarded with a vice chancellor scholarship last year. And since I'm able to divide my focus, I'm able to discover more things than I can do aside just from studying. What I'm trying to say is that, yes, good grades are important, but you need to thrive more than just being a good student. And that's also what lends me to where I am now, where aside from getting into the course that I want, which is dentistry, I'm also currently tutoring for the papers that I took. And this is not just for, um, you know, an extra pocket money for me to buy more ice cream, <laughs> but also it adds up to my personal experience and can be very good for my CV. So in conclusion, foundation year gave me so much more than just academic um, experiences and advantages. It also gives me the opportunity to be ahead from others in terms of personal growth. So that is my journey. Wonderful. Thank you so much for that, Violina. It's always nice to um, hear the first-hand experience from the students studying here at Otago University. So now I would like to open the floor to a Q&A session. Um, please feel free to um, turn your mic microphone on, on and ask your questions. But to start with, I'll pick up some of the questions that's come through in our Q&A um, box. I will, I like to ask this to Gary, but there's a question here. So foundation students who are currently studying in Otago, will they be returning to their classroom 
since New Zealand is now zero cases. Would you like to um, share a little bit about what is going on at the foundation program at the moment? Yes, uh, that's exactly correct. Um, the students that are here <coughs> will join classes uh, and we'll have uh, separate online streams for uh, students that are starting from, from overseas. Uh, a handful of students uh, managed to get back overseas uh, after their first semester in the February intake and they will also join the, the online sessions. Great, thank you for that, Gary. All right, I'm just reading through the questions. Okay. I will, yep. yeah. I'd like to answer one, um, Verlina, with your, your VC scholarship. Is, uh, people are asking lots of questions about that. So basically, it is a, it's a recommendation. Students don't need to do anything. There's no application. Um, academic staff at the foundation year put applications forward um, of students that they think um, should get the, the, the scholarship and put a statement of purpose and why to the vice chancellor directly. And then it's, actually, it's just her discretion, who she chooses for her, found, her, her scholarship and how much she gives as well. All right, there's a couple of questions for the foundation program. I'll pass this on to Gary. So um, two questions, is there an age limit for the foundation program? And also will accelerated foundation programs start in this October and can it be also taken online? Um, so the first one, uh, there is no age, no upper age limit. Lower age limit, yes there is. Um, and it's based really around academic achievement and the fact that with the code of practice in New Zealand, we wouldn't be able to enrol anyone here under the age of 15. Great, thank you. I'll add another question, Gary, if that's all right. So a foundation program to health science first year, to move on to health science first year, what does a student need to achieve to get into health science first year from foundation? Oh, from foundation, yes. So. Uh, students will do 10 papers, five papers in each of the two semesters. And in order to get our foundation study certificate, then um, students need to pass eight of those 10 papers. So they are C minus passes for six of the papers, but a C pass for the two academic English papers. Great, thank you. Just going through the questions now. There's another one here. What are the undergraduate programs are offering online start 2021 if borders are not open? Um, basically, we've been told that we're still waiting for that information. Um, we, we're hoping that the majority of undergraduate programs will be offered online from February 2021. I'm sure commerce and arts will be it's it's the clinical ones it's health science first year that we're still just waiting an answer on but we will let you all know um, if you go to the otago website and up the top on the home page is the COVID 19 and we're always updating information so that's the best place to go uh, to find out the latest information all right, thanks for all the questions. Um, we're getting quite a lot. Um, this one I'll ask Gary. So do you have a table that states different undergraduate program requirements for foundation graduation, graduate, graduation students? So it will be, uh, yep. I might have to, to defer to Victoria for that answer. No. It will be a successful completion of foundation program, isn't it, Gary? Yeah. Achieving. Yeah. yeah, we, yeah we the, the foundation study certificate is a university entrance certificate. So if uh, any student who passes the eight papers uh, will be guaranteed entry to all undergraduate programs. I, I think, Sky, you're, you're comparing us to University of Auckland. Um, and I know even like, this is, this is the type of question that New Zealand high school students ask as well. Um, what's the grade they need to get into different programs? We keep it really easy, really simple here at Otago. Um, get university entrance, come on in 
and then for like the health science uh, professional programs, then you prove yourself by doing health science first year and prove to us that you're one of the, the top students to get into those programs. So we believe everyone should have the chance of getting in. And so we keep it really simple and then you prove yourself in your first year. Okay, so um, for online peer-to-peer -peer support, who and how will, how will they provide the service? Is there um, some information that you could share at this stage, Gary and Paul? About the on online peer-to-peer -peer support? Uh, I'm not quite sure what the question's asking, but in terms of peer-to-peer -peer working with other students, um, when you're joining a live, a live classroom using Zoom, um, the teachers will often put you into different Zoom rooms with other students so that you can work and practice your English language or your other subjects um, alongside your peers in the actual classroom. So we try and make the online experience as close as possible as it would be to working with other students live in a real classroom. Do you anything to add to that, Gary? No, that's it in a nutshell. Um, uh, uh, a lot of the the, the peer to peer support is um, in terms of preparation, particularly for academic English. So we put students into groups, and they work together on various aspects of their assessments and, and uh, curriculum. Wonderful, thank you. Um, this is another question to Gary. Do you provide extra support and emphasis on academic writing during the language foundation years in regards to say, how to reference your essay? Yes, uh, actually the academic English program is all about that. So I should uh, draw a distinction between English language support that is provided by the Language Centre, which is of course is all about the, um, you know, the reading, writing, listening, speaking, etc. Uh, in the process. Uh, academic English at foundation year is all about exactly those sorts of things. It's how to uh, how to summarize, how to do a presentation, um, and I, I guess Violina could, could uh, give us some insights into that too, but it's certainly about referencing and all of those uh, things that you need for success at university. Great, thank you, Gary. So another one, after successful completion of online foundation year health science course, how can students start their health science first year in 2021? I might pass it on to Vic. Yeah. So um, in the ideal world, borders will be open and then the students will just um, be getting their, their visas very quickly turned around by New Zealand immigration and they'll be they're flying down to Dunedin and starting their health science first year course at the very end of February. That's an ideal world, but I, I think I know where you're coming from. What if? What's worst case scenario? Say a student has done online first year health science at foundation year, health, sorry, health science stream at foundation year, and the borders still aren't open or for whatever reason, and they want to start health science first year. 2021. Um, as I said before, I, I can't stay, sit here and, and say that yes, it will be online teaching. I, 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 I hope it will. I'm sure we'll be lobbying hard for it. This year in 2020, all the students that are doing health science first year, it was all online um, and they're just sitting their exams now and we'll know how successful they are by the end of the year. Um, that's all I can say right now. Sorry. Thank you. Um, I'll pick up two more qu questions and I will um, finish it there. But, okay, so to Gary and Paul, what kind of accommodation do you suggest for someone starting foundation year? Can you share about the accommodation options for the foundation year students? I can, um, and, and Paul can um, join too. We, we have our own homestay team here, and our strong preference is that students go into a homestay environment in the first instance. Now, it's not an absolute. Uh, we, we, we can make the, some of, the, um, some of the, the halls of residence available, uh, but that is our strong preference, and they, they get the full support around, around them then, and we, we organize all that. So there, there are still three options available. There's the, the homestay, the halls of residence, and flatting, but 
uh, we would prefer that students went into a homestay family and had that support around them so they can study full on for what they, where they want to go. And from a, a language centre point of view, the overwhelming majority of our students will go into a homestay for at least the first eight weeks of their time here. Um, and again, I strongly recommend that from a language learning point of view because it encourages students to use English outside of the classroom as much as possible. It also gives them a taste of New Zealand culture, New Zealand food, um, differences between a lifestyle in their home country and a lifestyle in New Zealand, which is all part of their Kiwi journey, really. Um, <laughs> later on, it's certainly possible to, um, to move into student flats or other accommodation. Um, I think an, another important thing I always emphasise when I'm talking to, to students and families is we manage all our own homestay families as well. So we check the quality, we provide support both to students and to the host families. And if a student has a problem and they come and tell us, we can normally fix the problem within 24 hours. Uh, and we think that's a, a much better way of managing outside of the language centre um, and outside of foundation year to make sure that they're safe and happy and are getting the best possible experience here. Eileen, do you want to add anything about your experience of homestay while you're at foundation year? Yes, um, so I went for a homestay during my foundation year and my health sciences first year. And um, I would say it's a really nice way to start your life in New Zealand because you learn about Kiwi ways of doing things in Dunedin here. And I still keep in touch with my homestay parents even until now, even when I'm not um, living with them anymore because we are able to um, build such a good relationships and they are able to support my needs to, um, you know, do a little bit of um, adjustments um, such as providing late dinner if I'm studying in the library. And um, other than that, um, I've also learned a lot from my host mother. Um, she taught me how to knit and other artsy stuff. So it was really interesting. Yeah, I would really recommend going for a homestay. Great, thank you, Violina. Yes, Paul. I was going to say, I could probably also ask Jasmine to jump in here as well. Jasmine started work for us earlier this year, but is a former Foundation Year um, student and also spent the first few months of her time here in a homestay. Yeah, I actually spent my first year in, in Foundation was my homestay and it was the first year of my university was a homestay. And I have to say that it was a very, very nice experience. Um, I'm very lucky. My homestay mother used to be a cook. So she just bought me the most lovely, amazing food of New Zealand pretty much every single day. And she's fully supported. So I would highly recommend if you are an international student new to New Zealand, well, try a homestay. It's the best way you can know and learn of the New Zealand culture. Great, thank you for sharing that, Jasmine. So um, I'm having a look at the list. I think we have one last question. Um, now we'll share this with you. So do you accept Duolingo English tests for the application? The answer is yes, Gary. The answer is yes. <laughs> yes. Uh, Paul, Paul can provide good advice about that. We, we explored that thoroughly um, and I, I would defer to Paul. Um, yeah, thanks, Gary. Yeah, it's a recent development, but we're now accepting Duolingua. Um, I'm expecting Victoria to leap in at any moment. Um, the IELTS indicator test, which is run in places that can't currently run the IELTS exam, and CERT something. Victoria. Oh. Language CERT and, and TOEFL as well. So um, most of this information is up on the website as well, both for the university and for Foundation and Language Centre. Yep, um, and yep, I would strongly suggest hopping onto the computer and looking at, at the entry requirements. And we also accept those qualifications for the University of Otago um, entry requirement. Okay, I think that is it for today.
All right, before I start, I'll just um, share a couple of information before we go. So we will be sending a short survey to follow up after this webinar. So it'd be great if you could contribute to the survey. And after that, we will share the recordings with you. Um, if you have any further questions, you're more than welcome to send an email to pathway at otago.ac.nz. And please also follow us on the social media. We're on Weibo and WeChat if you're in China. And if um, other, for other students and agents, we're on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. Um, this is the best way to um, access the latest updates and information from Otago University. We do plan to run a regular webinar session as Otago University for the rest of 2020. So we hope to see you there again. All right, and once again, thank you very much for joining us today. And please have a wonderful day everywhere or wherever you are in the world. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Thank you, everyone.